What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing part two of my home golf simulator project that I'm working on. So if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, you would know that I did start framing up my basement and as you can see behind me, I pretty much have this whole side framed out and I have the side behind you framed out as well. So I got all that done. Now I'm gonna be working on my projector. But before we start talking about the projector, let me just show you something real quick. So this room here is actually going to be the theater room slash golf simulator room. So what I have over here is just temporary drapes that I brought from upstairs. They're actually gray on the other side, but the back is more of a room darkening white. And I am trying different black drapes on the sides, put, putting them up, putting them down, trying different things because I'm trying to get a general idea on the screen size because I did order a screen. It's gonna be an eight foot high by 14 foot wide screen, which is pretty close to this. Now, this is a little over eight foot high, but my screen's gonna be about an inch or two shorter from top to bottom. But this is just meant to give me a general good idea for when I actually mount a projector, just to be able to project the image on the wall to get a general idea on how to adjust some of the settings before my screen comes in. So I just wanted to point that out there. Now this room here, okay? This room here is roughly 14 foot eight inches from the outside of my wood frame wall to pretty much the inside of the steel beam. So about 14, eight this way. That way I have about four inches on either side of the screen. And then from here to here is about 19 feet. So I do have a pretty good distance here, and then I assume that my, my projector is gonna pretty much be mounted almost right in the middle of the room. Now, the projector that I went with is actually a short throw projector. So with the short throw projector, you typically don't need as much space to project the image onto your screen. So the projector I ended up going with is an Optima GT 1080 HDR. It's a short throw projector. It can actually project 100 inch screen at about four feet give or take so because my screen is going to be a lot larger i assume i'm going to have to pull it back a good probably eight feet from the screen maybe a little bit more but i'll have to test that and try it out to see how it works but it is a high spec projector at a very affordable cost now there are better projectors out there that are 4k and have other specs that would be great for this setup but some of those could be $1,500 upwards of $3,000. And that's just not what I was willing to spend at this time, just because of all the other money I have invested in finishing my basement at the same time. So this particular projector was fairly affordable at around $800, but I ended up doing a lot of research, comparing a lot of different projectors, seeing what was good, seeing what was bad, comparing specifications of each projector. And this particular projector to me, tended to be the best value because I got the most bang for my buck. But this particular projector is actually labeled as a gaming projector because it has higher specs than some other projectors. So it has 120 Hertz, it has 8.4 millisecond response time, has the HDR color gamut. It actually has a lot of great features which we will go over here shortly when we, when we dive into opening it up. But I just wanted to point out a few things because when you compare the amount of specs that this projector has at $800 and then compare other projectors in the $800 range, they don't even have a lot of these specs. So in terms of what I was looking for, which is a projector for my golf simulation software, but also as a home theater that can watch high definition movies and something that I can plug in my PlayStation 5 and me and the kids can actually play some pretty cool games on a very large screen. So I wanted a projector that was capable of sort of doing all of that and that's what I found in this. Now again, like I said before, there are better projectors out there. There's laser projectors, 4K projectors, but they cost double, triple, or even quadruple the price that I spent on this one. So for $800, I think this is gonna be a good match for what I'm using it for. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. Okay, so the projector that I ended up going with is the Optima GT 1080 HDR. Now, this is more of a gaming projector and I'll pull up my other phone here so I can show you. But I got it off Best Buy and I did some research on this and it did come up with a lot of really good reviews. I got this projector for around $800. Now here's what I like about it. Now let's see if I can get you to see this. 
okay? So it's about $800, but it's a short throw gaming projector. It does have a 4K input. It has 120 hertz for very fast screen movement. So if you're playing video games that are fast moving or watching, uh, say, movies on screen like uh, NASCAR or something where there's a lot of fast movement on the screen, the 120 hertz is going to really help with that. Let me go down to some of the specs here and show you as well. So as you can see, 1920 by 1080, so full HD resolution. It has 3,800 lumens, so it's actually gonna be pretty bright. Now my basement down here, after I'm done finishing it, I'm gonna have recessed lights that I'll be able to turn on and shut off over here, separately from lights on the rest of the basement. So I shouldn't really need all of that, but the whole purpose of having the 3,800 lumens is if I am watching a movie and I have a, like a table lamp on, it's not gonna wash out my screen. So keep in mind when you're looking at a projector, higher lumens is gonna also give you a brighter screen in rooms that happen to have a little bit more light. Now, if you have a dark room where there's no windows and you don't have any lights going on and there's no natural light, then maybe you don't need that high of a lumens. I really like that for my application. It also has a 50,000 to one contrast ratio, which should give me better blacks. The contrast ratio is typically gonna help you get darker blacks instead of having that like washed out black that almost looks gray when you have a lower contrast ratio. So it has a really good contrast ratio here. Let's go down here a little bit further. Uh, noise level, 26 decibels. That's probably referring to the fan. So uh, some people that have reviewed this said that the fan is a little noisier than some of the higher end projectors, meaning if you're sitting there in dead silence, you can hear the fan running that runs to cool this down. But if you're watching a movie, playing a game, or have some other sound going on, you probably shouldn't even really hear that fan, okay? Especially when it's mounted to the ceiling. Let's keep going here. I'm not worried about sizes, pounds. Going on here, uh, where are we at here? We just talked about that. It's a 16-9 aspect ratio, which is also important because again, the last thing you wanna do when you're trying to get a golf simulator set up or even a home theater is to have the wrong size screen matched up with the opposite aspect ratio of what your projector is capable of putting out. So for example, if you have a 16-9 ratio projector projecting onto a four by three screen, you're not gonna get the optimal viewing experience because your viewing screen is gonna be wider than your actual screen. So you're gonna have to probably shrink it down, but then as you shrink it down, you're gonna have those black bars at the top and bottom. So just be careful when you're comparing projectors and screens and make sure that you get them compatible with each other or if you happen to get a projector that has the capability of doing a 4-3 ratio or a 16-9, that's good. That way you could switch back and forth. But for my application, I will have a larger 16-9 ratio screen and my projector is a 16-9 ratio projector. So that's good as well. Let's go back here. So we just talked about the 16-9 ratio, high dynamic range. So that's gonna give us some real nice bright rich colors. 3D technology is capable. Look at that, response time, 8.4 milliseconds. That's huge. So when you're looking at a response time of 8.4 milliseconds, that's gonna really help reduce a lot of the visual lag when you're playing games. So being that I'll be playing a golf simulation game on here that's gonna be tracking ball flight and distances and so forth, I don't wanna have any choppy lag. That should help with that. And I'll be bringing my PlayStation 5 down here for the kids and I when we're playing video games together. When you're playing Call of Duty or playing Fortnite or whatever the, whatever the case is, you're gonna notice a lot less lag and have a much smoother, faster response in those games. So that's another bonus to this. Now let's go here again. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, 120 hertz. Here we go. Viewing projector distance as close as 1.3 feet and maximum 11.3. So what's nice is maximal viewing screen size is 308 inches, minimal is 36. So again, when you figure out your math on your screen size, okay, my screen size after you figure it out is gonna be over 200 inches. I don't remember the exact because I, I, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but I know the screen size overall is over 200 inches. So, 
if this particular projector can project a 100 inch screen at anywhere from four to five feet, I should have no problem with this short throw projector filling up that entire 16 by nine screen. Now, again, this is temporary. This is just to give me a rough idea of my screen. My actual white screen, when it comes in, after I mount it, because it'll have a black border around the whole edge, is gonna be very similar to the white part here maybe an inch shorter on both sides because of the border, but this will give me a pretty good general idea on how big my screen is compared to the projector. Now I've already done this to give me a general idea of the screen size so that when I was shopping for the projector and the screen, I knew what it's capable of doing. So if you're not 100% sure, just go ahead and get some white curtains or, or white sheets or whatever the case is. Hang them up in the area that you plan on using as a projection screen and get a general idea of is this too big for you or is it too small? Now, again, I was trying to fill the maximum screen size in this space because when I'm up close, let's say right here in front of here and I have a whole gulf simulation, I want to have the most immersive experience that feels like I'm truly there. I don't want a tiny little screen. So could this be a little too big when I'm sitting right here, when I actually pull a couch over here and we're watching a movie on a movie night? Maybe, but we'll figure that out. But I don't think so. I think it's going to look really amazing once I'm all done with that. But this is the Optima GT 1080 HDR projector. It's Again, about $800. And when you're comparing projectors out there, you're gonna notice that not all of the other projectors like the BenQs and the different brands, they're not all gonna have these specs at this price range. At $800, none of them had all of these specs. They might have one or two, but not all. This Optima was the only one that had all of those specs which I was looking for. Now, when you start getting into the higher cost projectors like the 1500 to say $2,500 range, that's when you're going to start getting some other brands that have high specs like this, but they're going to cost you double or triple that cost. And then when I went online, these are actually hard to find. When I went on Amazon or eBay, they're almost sold out everywhere or back ordered everywhere. Now, maybe it's because of all the COVID lockdowns we've had on and off over the past couple of years where a lot more people are staying home, a lot more people are golfing at home, so they just bought up all of these projectors, but that just tells me that that's a very popular projector if it's pretty much sold out everywhere. But I did find it on Best Buy, they did have it available, I ordered it, it showed up in a couple of days, and here we go. So let's go ahead and unbox it and we'll see what it looks like. Okay? So once you open it up, you're going to have some just basic um, information about the projector, some batteries for the remote. It does come with a remote, so I'll pull this out here to show you what it looks like. Okay. Now again, it's not that fancy of a remote. There's not much to it. It's small. It's it's convenient. It fits right in your palm of your hand. It has this little indenture right here so that you're kind of resting your, your hand. So it actually works pretty good. It seems very easy to maneuver. It's not overly big. Um, I actually don't mind it. I mean, it's not as, it's not as high techy looking, but for what it is, I think this is actually a pretty good size and it seems like it'd be very easy to handle. Um, so that, that's that. It does come with your power cord here. So again, you can plug it in your wall. Okay. All right, that seems to be about it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, take the plastic off. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so there it is. This is the Optima GT 1080 HDR projector. This is a short throw projector. Now, again, this is a bulb. This is not a laser. So there's going to be a bulb in here. Okay. And these bulbs are rated at variable lifespans from say 6,000 hours up to 10 or 12 or even 15,000 hours, depending on how you're using it. If you happen to have it at its max brightness and you're using it 
a lot. Your bulb probably won't last much more than say 6,000 hours, but if you have it dimmed down a little bit and you turn on some of the performance saving features, you're probably gonna be able to get at least 10,000 viewable hours out of this, if not more. Now, these bulbs are replaceable. You can find them online. They're not cheap, but you could probably get a brand new replacement bulb for about $120, give or take. But think about it this way. If you go with a laser projector, those light features are not very easy to replace. And if they are, they're very expensive. So just keep that in mind when, when you're shopping for projectors, comparing bulbs to lasers. But this one here, it's gonna have a short throw bulb. It's gonna have your focus and zoom button right here. You can just pretty much slide it back and forth. It's gonna have all your buttons on the actual unit, you know, your power, you know, your menu buttons, your skip buttons, your play buttons and so forth. That's all here. But primarily because it's gonna be mounted on the ceiling, you're most likely gonna be using the remote. So these buttons may or may not be useful, but if you do happen to have this mounted um, on the table, then you might use some of these buttons, but most likely you're gonna be using your remote, okay? Turn it onto the side, just pretty much your fins for your airflow and your fans. Uh, on, so that's the front there. Here's the side here, nothing there. Here's the other side there. Now let's go to the back. Pull this foam pad out. Okay, so there you go. So we have plenty of ports. So you're gonna have an HDMI one port there. You're gonna have an HDMI two MHL. So those are just giving you some high definition options for hooking up different displays. You have your USB power out, you have your VGA in, your VGA out, and your RS-232 port there as well. Over here, you're gonna have your audio out and your audio in. So again, it does have a good bit of options for hooking up different displays. Now again, on my situation, which I still have to do, is I'm gonna be doing all my electrical at a later date. But for now, I'm probably just gonna use an extension cord to get up here for power for the projector. But eventually, when I actually finish this and I start getting into all my electrical, I'm gonna be running recessed lights, extra outlets, and so forth. So that's at a later date. But when my projector is up here on the ceiling, I am gonna have HDMI cords running down because I'm gonna probably temporarily right here have my home PC computer here, which is gonna be running the golf simulation software. But from that computer, there's gonna be an HDMI cord that plugs into the projector. I'll probably also have my PlayStation 5 down here, which I can run the HDMI from there up to the projector as well. So that's primarily what you're doing is you're using HDMI cords from the source you wanna use to the projector. Now, some of the lower cost projectors, they only have one HDMI port, which just limits you to how many things you can hook up to that without having to constantly unplug and plug different things in. Now, if you come over here, you'll see what I have. I have this extra long 50 foot Cat 6A networking cable. So up here, Above this room here is a, is a future office upstairs, but I primarily just use it as more of a very basic home gym. But I have my modem and one of my routers in that room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that networking cable down through the corner of the floor. I'm gonna run it over here and drop it down and hardwire into my PC. Now the PC does have wireless capabilities for networking, but I'd rather have it plugged in and and have a direct internet connection from my modem, hardwired straight to the PC, so I don't have to worry about any kind of wireless issues. So that's what that wire here is for, and I got this off Amazon. Now the Cat 6A is just typically better than the regular Cat 6. It's gonna allow for a better signal, so that's why I went with that, and I ordered that online, very inexpensive. I'll put the link in the description for that. Over here, I got these, I ordered two of them. These are actually 25 foot, high quality HDMI cables. Again, I got those very inexpensive off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. I'm gonna be using those for hooking up from the PC to the projector and the PlayStation 5 to the projector. So that's what I have there. And then let me move the SkyTrack box out of the way. The SkyTrack is what I'm using for my golf simulation tracking software. And then I have a basic universal ceiling mount here that I got off, I believe, Amazon as well. Very inexpensive, but it had really good reviews. Uh, it's more of a ceiling mount that has some flexibility in rotating and turning and angling your projector. So that's basically what we're doing is today I wanna go ahead and play around with getting an extension cord over here so I can at least stand on the ladder and hold the projector up 
to see how far back I need to do it. Cause I'm going to have to measure my center point, And then I'm going to probably measure back roughly 10 feet, which I'm assuming is about right in this general area here. And then I'm going to do a couple trial tests of the projector to see how well it hits the screen. Once I find the best location for the projector, I'm going to mount the mount up there. So the goal today is to get the projector up and running and mounted to the ceiling. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring my PC down, get that hooked up over here. And then I'm going to eventually get this networking cable ran to the PC. So I have that working. So again, my goal today over the course of today and tomorrow is to have the computer down here working and running and connected to the projector. That way in another week and a half or so, when the new screen shows up, I'll frame that out, put the screen up, and then we should be able to start playing golf. So that's the goal there. So let me go ahead and start diving into this and we'll be back here very soon. Okay, now when it comes to mounting your actual ceiling mount kit to your projector, a lot of this is gonna vary depending on which mount you get. Now again, I wanted something that was very basic just because I'm not sure what I need or what I want yet. So I got this on Amazon. It was actually pretty affordable. Uh, it's called the Qual Gear universal ceiling mount. And again, I'll go ahead and put this link in the description as well. But from all the reviews, it's a pretty sturdy and fairly adjustable universal mount. So all you wanna do is this top piece here is what's gonna to go to your ceiling, okay? Now this can swivel left to right, all right? And then these two bolts here mount to these two bolts here. So this piece right here is what mounts to your projector. This mounts to that. And this allows you to swivel side to side, back and forth, or in a 360 degree rotation. So the best thing to do is probably get some type of a towel or box. Let's go like this. Just use this. I'm just going to go ahead and use this box. Okay, so all I did was just use the box, something soft, place the projector upside down. Now, as you can see, there are already three holes that are pre-drilled for a mount. Now, every mount is going to be different. So what you could do is just kind of lay your mount here and get an idea of where you're gonna to have to mount your pieces. Now they actually do have in this kit all kinds of different hardware, bolts and extension legs. So for, for this particular one, because these holes are so close together, I might not even need the long legs. So let me go ahead, play around with this for a minute. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we're back. So what I did was I just stood on the ladder with the projector and sort of held it up with my hand just to get a general idea on does the projection pretty much fit the screen as close as I could possibly get it. So I found out that basically this center cavity was where my projector is gonna have to go. Maybe an inch or two back, but I think right here is where it needs to go. Now the problem I ran into is my ductwork was sitting right there centered in the ceiling. So all I did was I untaped this section here, popped it off, took the head that was over here, slid it back, mounted it back over here, everything's good. I really don't care if my register vent in this room is offset to the side of the room. I don't care about that because I want the projector in the middle and then I'll have a recess light behind it facing straight down where we're gonna golf. So then what I did was I know my screen is 14 feet. So then what I did was I went on this floor joist here. I marked over four inches, as you sort of can see right there. Marked four inches over here, counted out seven feet. And then I marked it seven foot, which I don't know if you can see it, but right there, that's my seven foot mark. And I measured over here, seven foot to this mark right there. And that ended up being four inches from this wall. So everything was gonna work perfectly good there. So I already found my center point. All I had to do was find my distance back from the screen. And I think right there is the way I'm gonna have to start for now. Now again, this is just a temporary ceiling mount. I'm eventually probably gonna buy a sliding mount that's gonna, I'm gonna put another block over here. That way I can slide the projector forward or back along the same center track. And that'll really give me some more flexibility when adjusting my screen. Right here is where I think it's gonna work for now. Now I went ahead and blocked it, but then I wasn't paying attention that my mount is off centered from the actual projector. So right here would be the center, it's off centered. So it still worked. I just had to mount it off centered. So now I can go ahead and hook my projector up, which I'm gonna do here in a minute. 
And for now, I just have an extension cord running from behind here because I have an outlet over here. It runs over here. And then I just have my cord for the projector draped over for now. So again, that's just a temporary fix until I can get all of my electrical stuff done, which is gonna take another month or two. But right now, I just wanted to get the projection screen hooked up. I wanna be able to play golf and I want the kids to be able to watch movies and play video games and enjoy it down here. So let me go ahead and mount that projector up on the ceiling and let's go play around with it here in a minute. Okay, so as you can see here, Two. I do have it set up. Three. Four. I need to make a few more adjustments to the screen, but again, this is good for now until I can actually get my new impact screen hooked up because this is very wavy and it's not exactly lined up. So once I get the new screen, I can line it up. But this Optima actually has a 10 watt built in speaker and it actually sounds pretty good. So again, I just got to hang a few more wires. I got my computer hooked up over here. And uh, so far it's going pretty good. So again, once I get my new screen hooked up, then I'll be able to make a few more adjustments and get it squared off nice and easy. Now, this is a stationary mount. I'm not a big fan of those only because I had it mounted up here. And then after I made a few adjustments to the screen, I realized I had to pull it back to here, make a few adjustments to the screen, and it's still not 100% perfect. So what I'm probably going to do is put another block right here, and then I'm going to buy a new mount, but an adjustable track, so I can slide the projector forward and back a lot easier to get it to the exact picture I want. Because trying to unmount and mount a projector mount on the ceiling over and over and over gets a little bit redundant and becomes a pain in the butt. But for now, it's looking pretty good. So again, this is just curtains hung on the wall. But again, once I get the new screen hooked up and there's no wrinkles on it and it's a nice flat screen, it's going to look really good. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. This is just to give you an example of what it looks like in the middle of installation. But so far, it's going good. This is going to turn out to be a really nice movie theater and it's going to work really well for a golf simulator. So that's it. But as far as the projector goes, now keep in mind, when you are using a short throw projector and you mount it on the ceiling, the image is gonna be upside down, but you can change that in the software. And they typically have to be angled upwards a little bit because most short throw projectors are usually mounted on a table or on the ground. So there's the, the technology in them angles the picture up. So when you flip it upside down, it's gonna to have to angle it down. So what you're gonna do is once you get your projector mounted on the ceiling, you want to angle it up on an angle, and then you're going to make a lot of your screen adjustments through the software. But so far, it's looking pretty straight, and it's looking pretty good, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So again, day one of getting the projector hooked up, I got a few more wires to run, and then I got a few more tweaks to do in the computer. But so far, it's going pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with it, and I think the kids are going to really enjoy even just tonight coming down here and watching a spooky movie or something like that. Turn out all the lights down here. It's going to look pretty cool. So let me show you what it looks like with the lights out. There. I mean, that's pretty cool. Now, again, if I was able to take this projector and slide it back maybe another six inches, I'll probably be able to fill that screen 100%. But right now, again, this is just trial and error. Exactly. When, you have, when you have a mount like that, it's trial and error. You're going to have to try a few different things. But I do think I'm going to go ahead and order that new ceiling mount that's more of a track that allows you to slide your projector forward and back, typically within, say, 12 to 18 inches. But that is a huge deal when you're trying to fill a screen and you don't want to keep adjusting and unmounting and mounting a stationary mount like that. So I'll probably go ahead and just return this mount. Um, or I'll just keep it as a backup, but I am going to go ahead and, and buy a new track mount because I think that's going to make life a lot easier when you're trying to get the screen figured out. So again, this is just a little spooky show my kids like to watch, but I just wanted to try it out and see how it looks. And so far, it looks pretty awesome. Come over here a little bit. There you go. That is an eight by 14 screen. Now that screen's not 100% filled yet either. 
But again, once I get my new screen in the mail, that should be coming probably around the second week of October. I'll get it mounted on. I'll have, I'll put the bungee cords on. It'll be nice and tight. It should look pretty awesome. So, but for now, this is pretty sweet. Okay, so one of the first things I would recommend you do is once you get your projector mounted and hooked up and you actually have something visible on the screen. Now, again, I've already hooked mine up to the computer, but if you don't have a computer hooked up yet and you just have the blue screen, that's fine. One thing you're going to want to do either before you hang it on the ceiling or if it's on the ceiling is just make sure you go through the settings with your remote and change the orientation of the screen because typically out of the box, they're gonna be set up to where it's gonna be on the floor or on a table facing up. So when you flip the projector upside down like this, your image is gonna be upside down. So to do that, you're just gonna go into your menu button, which is right here, this blue button right here where my thumb is. Hit that. Now again, it's kinda of hard to see here. Okay, so the first thing you actually wanna do is go to your settings, which is like the third option down, and go to this one right here, the top one. It's called projection. Oh, it went away. Okay, so remember, go down to settings, hit enter, projection. So this right here is on the ceiling facing away from you. This is behind the screen facing you. This is on the floor facing the screen. This is on the floor behind the screen facing you. So you wanna make sure you choose the right one so that you have the proper image so that it's not upside down and so forth. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is that you can change your sound settings. You can go in here and change like different lamp settings, filter settings, power settings, security, all these type of settings, right? But let's go up to the top. I wanna to point out a couple of these things. When you go to image settings and go down, so you can go to enhanced gaming, aspect ratio, 16 by nine, or you can choose four by three. Now, edge mask, that's where you're actually going up or down. It'll actually pull in. Let me try it. Okay. So when I go up or down, it'll pull the edge of the screen in or open it up. Okay. So that's what edge mask is. Zoom is going to be basically if you're zooming in and out. Okay. And again, this is just basically my desktop on my computer. But that's zoom, so you could zoom in or out. Image shift is where you can actually shift your screen image up or down or side to side. So again, if, you're, if your projector on the ceiling is not mounted exactly center because maybe there's something in the way, which is fine, you can actually go in here and adjust your image shift up or down, left or right. And then keystone is really for if you have your... Like here, I'll show you. I have it on set on 10, but watch. If I do go down lower, that means that the screen is basically facing forward. This is Imagine this remote is your screen. It's facing forward like this. As you adjust the keystone, you can adjust it straight up or down. So sometimes you have to do that. Go into keystone, depending on how you have your image, how you have your projector. I'd say nine is probably the closest but I'll leave it at 10 for now until I get my new screen. So again, I just wanted to point out that when you do get your projector set up, you wanna make sure you go into the settings using your remote. Blue button here is gonna actually be your menu. You can actually change your orientation with this button here. 3D video it has all the different settings here, okay? Brightness, you can hit this green button on the bottom, hit brightness, and then you can actually adjust. You can do eco, dynamic, eco plus, bright, so again, you can play around with it to see which way you want. Now, remember, like I mentioned earlier, if you run this at the very brightest setting all the time, you're probably just going to have less lamp hours for your bulb. But either way, I mean, if you got to spend a uh, hundred bucks on a bulb, you know, once a year, it is what it is. If you want to have your screen nice and bright because that's what you enjoy, then do it. You know, I wouldn't recommend going to the very lowest settings to stretch out your lamp life if it's not gonna be good for you. Now, if it is good for you, and you can go to, say, eco mode, like, see, right here, eco, and that's bright enough for you, but it doesn't hurt your eyes, it allows you to see clearly, and all that works, fantastic, you know, go with that. But for now, I'm leaving it on dynamic until I can get my screen figured out and I get all this updated. But again, that's just what I wanted to point out and show you. So again, if you are putting your projector up on the ceiling, I just wanted to show you real quick how you can actually access the menu 
on the projector by using the remote and just make your setting adjustments there. But again, so far, I really like how this is going. Now watch, if I shut the lights out, again, I still have some daylight coming in over here, but that looks pretty good. Okay, everybody, so that is it for today's video. I was able to get the projector mounted up on the ceiling. I got some of the wires ran. I played around with some of the software. I actually got a movie playing right now. And I gotta say, so far, this projector is pretty sweet. It's got a really crisp, clear screen. It's pretty bright. It has some other bright settings. This is only about half the brightness. So again, I still got to play with the settings. It has a 10 watt built in speaker, which is pretty loud. So as far as features go, this projector seems to have it all. And for only 800 bucks, you can't really go wrong. So far, I'm really happy with it. And as you can see over here, again, I have the uh, lights all turned on. But again, when I turn the lights off, I'll turn them off one more time to show you. I mean, now again, this is just curtains. I have my new screen coming in about two weeks, so it'll look a lot better. But so far, just watching a movie and listening to the sound, it's pretty sweet. I'm really happy with it. And I think it's gonna really be awesome for a golf simulator. So that's, so that's it for today's video. Do me a favor, like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because I greatly appreciate it and there's always new content coming. Again, I'm always doing something different, whether it's customizing my vehicles, doing home construction, doing cool projects like finishing the basement and putting in a golf simulator, doing technology reviews and all kinds of different stuff. So if you're into a variety of different things, not just one thing, definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm always doing something. So again, I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you for all of the support. And as always, see you in the next video.